government is changing and is involving more and more people because of the decentralized communication that creates networks of people that can get involved in issues. I mean, just look at the last political campaign and how involved millions of people were in the blogosphere and in social networks and all of the other tools we have for decentralized communication, which I believe are deeply democratizing. In fact, I wrote in my first book, The Age of Intelligent Machines, in the 1980s, there were the first stirrings of decentralized communication in the Soviet Union. People were sending email from teletype machines and there were fax machines. And I said, this is going to sweep away totalitarian control. Uh, and that was criticized as being ridiculous because the Soviet Union was going strong at the time. But that's exactly what we saw in this coup against Gorbachev in 1991. It was this clandestine network of decentralized communication that swept it away. With the rise of the World Wide Web in the 1990s, there was a great wave of democracies. And even in you know nominally authoritarian countries like China, there's 100 million blogs. I was just there. Half the farmers in China have cell phones, and not just phones. They are powerful web-enabled devices that enable them to communicate with people all over the world. And people are getting involved in these issues, and I think that's a positive thing. And government uh, needs to reorganize itself to really uh, get information uh, from large numbers of people. Uh, we've shown that decentralized communication can actually harness the wisdom of crowds. You know, a crowd can be a lynch mob, and that's really harnessing the, the lowest common denominator of intelligence of a group, or it can actually be wiser than any of the individuals, uh, particularly when you organize market mechanisms using decentralized communication. And that is what I think we're seeing. I think this decentralized communication is deeply democratizing. It's also democratizing the tools of creativity. It used to be if you wanted to create a movie, you had to be a Hollywood studio. Now a kid in her dorm room with a $500 high-definition camera and her PC can create a full-length motion picture, and they're doing that. Uh, recorded albums uh, with the equivalent of a million dollars of recording equipment from, of 10 years ago. A kid in her dorm room can command that. My father couldn't even hear his music compositions, he was a composer, without hiring an orchestra in the 1960s. Today, a student can command a whole orchestra in her dorm room. A couple of kids at Stanford wrote some software on their $1,000 laptops, revolutionized web search, and their company's worth over $100 billion today. The tools of disruptive change are in everybody's hands, and not just in wealthy countries. Uh, these powerful communication devices and creative devices and the internet is becoming ubiquitous in Africa and everywhere around the world. Half the, the world now, three billion people, have uh, we cell phones and they're becoming web enabled uh, and so on. So I, I believe these are democratizing technologies and they are spreading out, particularly if you have a democratic system, uh, people are communicating with each other and it's democratizing at many levels. If somebody has a chronic disease, they go into their doctor's office probably as knowledgeable as their doctor about that disease because they're in touch with groups around the world sharing the latest information.